Hey guys, welcome to ASMR TKZ. This is Cher. I want you to relax for this video, so grab a snack and let's take a look at compound inequalities. Now, let's take a look at what a compound inequality is. As it says here, a compound inequality is made up of one or more inequalities. Now, for the first part here, guys, the first thing we'll be doing is to write a compound inequality for each graph that is shown here. So, let's get into it, okay? Alright, so for the first graph here, guys, which is in the form of a number line, we can clearly see that there are two closed circles on the number line. Each closed circle is located at a different number, and we have a line connecting the two closed circles. Now, whenever you see a graph like this, guys, always remember that this is an example of a compound inequality involving and, right? Whenever you see two closed circles, they are connected like this, whether they are closed or open. All right, so for this first one here, if we take a look at negative one, obviously, as I said, we have that closed circle there. So if we represent just this portion of the compound inequality, that is represented as x is greater than or equal to negative one. What we actually have happening, guys, if I do a quick search of a graph, so at negative one, we have that closed circle, and we have that arrow going to the right, like that. Then at positive two, now, if you notice, we have another closed circle. So, let's say positive two is right here. So we have that closed circle, the arrow goes to the left. So basically, these two arrows meet, right? And so we end up with just that one arrow, or that one line to represent these two arrows that actually end up meeting. For this one, it is x is less than or equal to 2. Now, to write the component inequality to represent this graph, guys, there are two ways to write it. So, one way to represent it, guys, is where you write it as x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and use the word and, and x is less than or equal to 2. And the other way to write it is where you remove the word and. So, uh, and you just combine it as one inequality. So what does it look like? This is what it looks like. First, you start with a negative one. So basically, you're going to write this part first, but you're starting with negative one. So let's think about it. If x is greater than or equal to negative one, then negative one has to be less than or equal to x. Fine. So that's why you can write it in this form. So we have negative one, and then we're writing it like that. So negative one is less than or equal to x. So we won't bother to write x another time, we'll just keep the one x, and then we'll put less than or equal to 2. So this is the other way to write it. Okay guys, now let's take a look at the second one that we have here. So taking a look at this graph, guys, we can notice that we have arrows going in separate directions. We have an open circle located at positive 2, and a closed circle located at negative 2. So to represent this part of the graph here, guys, with the arrow going to the left, closed circle, and that negative 2, we represent it as x is less than or equal to negative 2. But this one here with the open circle, because it's an open circle, guys, we'll use the greater than symbol. So we'll represent it as x is greater than positive 2. Over here, guys, we use the less than or equal to symbol because of the closed or shaded circle, okay? Alright, so, uh, another thing here, guys, is that whenever you see a graph like this where you have arrows going in opposite directions, I want you to always remember that this is a compound inequality representing or. So, to write the compound inequality for this graph, guys, we'll write it as x is less than or equal to negative 2 or x is greater than positive 2. So that's what we have. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the other graph here. So for this graph, guys, you'll notice that it looks very similar to A, where we have a line uh, connecting two circles, but if you notice here, the circles are unshaded, or you could say that they're open. So, to represent this graph, guys, we have to first take a look at the circles, you know, again, they're open, so we know that we'll be using the greater than symbol to represent one and the less than symbol to represent the other. Now, we're 
Jennifer is going to write it in the format that we have here at the top because remember that whenever it's a graph that represents a compound inequality involving and there are two ways to represent the solution so for the part that negative 2 that is represented as x is greater than negative 2 and don't forget that word and for here at positive 1 because we have the open circle arrow going to the left we know that is represented as x is less than 1 all right so then that's one way to represent the, the, the compound inequality for it. So let me just write it here. So that's x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 1. Okay, so for the other way to represent it, guys, we'll start off by writing negative 2. And basically, we're just rewriting this, but we're writing the negative 2 first, which means that we'll have to change the symbol or flip it, right? So, uh, just a reminder. So, if we have x is greater than negative 2, then that means negative 2 has to be less than x. So, hence why we can put that negative 2 first and write it in this form. So, negative 2 is less than x, and then x is also uh, less than 1. Now, let's move on. So, for this section, guys, we'll be solving each compound inequality and then graphing the solution. What we're going to do, guys, is to solve each inequality just as we would any other inequality. But just bear in mind that we're solving a compound inequality involving and. So, starting off, we'll look at 2x plus 9 is greater than negative 3. So, here, to solve for x, we'll first remove the 9 that is being added. So, to remove the 9, we'll perform the opposite operation, which is subtraction. So, we're subtracting 9 from sides of the inequality. So then guys, we're left with 2x is greater than negative 12. Then we'll need to remove the 2. To remove the 2, we'll divide both sides by 2. Both sides of the inequality. So we're left with x is greater than negative 6. Now we can move on to the next inequality. We have 4x plus 7 is less than 15. So starting off, we'll first remove the 7 that we see here that to remove the 7, we'll subtract it since it's been added here. So we'll subtract 7 from both sides of the inequality. Once we do that, guys, we're left with 4x is less than 8. Now we need to remove this 4. To remove the 4, guys, we'll perform the opposite operation of multiplication, which is division. So we'll just divide both sides of the inequality by 4. So we're left with x is less than 2. We'll represent our solution as x is greater than negative 6 and x is less than 2. The other way we could represent our solution, guys, is as you saw before in part 1, where we can represent it as negative 6 is less than x and x is less than 2. So I know that we have x greater than negative 6 here. However, the reason why we can write the negative 6, change the sign and then put the x, is because if x is greater than negative 6, uh, negative 6 has to be less than x. Now, let's graph the solution. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. So, we'll now graph the solution. So this is our number line, guys. I'm not going to put a lot of numbers on it. I'll just put a zero here. And then I'll have positive two right there. And then we'll just put negative six right here. Right. Now, on our number line, we'll first go ahead and represent x is greater than negative six. So because it's the greater than symbol, we know that we'll have an open circle with an arrow going to the right. So, here we have an open circle right here and the arrow goes to the right. Now we know it's a compound inequality involving and so know that the arrows will connect. So I'll just pause right there. Then I move on to the next part of the solution, which is x is less than 2. So we know that that's going to be an open circle with an arrow going to the left. So I'm going to go to positive 2 right here an open circle and have my arrow going to the left like that. So then we end up with our graph looking like this. Let's move on to the next one guys. So for this one we have uh, 2x 
minus 5 is less than 3 or negative 4x plus 7 is less than negative 29 Now as you see here guys, this is an example of a compounding inequality involving or Okay, so just like before, we'll just solve each of these inequalities just as we would any other inequalities guys So we'll start off with this one here The first thing we're going to do here is to remove the 5 by adding 5 to both sides of the inequality Right, so then we're left with 2x is less than 8 Next, we'll just go ahead and remove the 2 that we're seeing by dividing both sides of the inequality by 2 So then we're getting x is less than 4 Now, let's move on to the next inequality So the first thing we're going to do here, guys, is to remove the 7 by subtracting 7 from both sides of the inequality So we're getting negative 4x is less than negative 36 Alright, so I'm just going to rewrite this again, so we have negative 4x I'm not going to write the symbol yet, and I'm going to put the 36, so here's why I didn't write it Now, when you're, once you divide by a negative value your inequality symbol changes So instead of it being a less than symbol It now becomes a greater than symbol Alright And over on this side We're just dividing by the negative 4 as well So then Our solution becomes X is greater than Positive 9 So for our solution We have x is less than 4 or x is greater than 9 Now let's graph our solution guys Our graph So I'm just gonna put uh, 4 right about here I'm not putting a lot of numbers on the number line I'm putting 4 right there and putting 9 right there <laughs> Now to represent x is less than 4, we'll put an open circle at 4 with our arrow going to the left That's a shaky arrow, but yeah <laughs> Then to represent x is greater than 9, we'll put a, an open circle at 9 with our arrow going to the right And that's our graph to represent the solution Now let's move on to the next one so guys, let me know if in the comments when you just saw this one, if you thought to yourself that's a compounding inequality involving and let me know. Alright, so right, because it is, okay, it's, it's an example of a compounding inequality involving and so I like these ones because everything's just in one spot. Alright, and by everything I mean what you're working on. Alright, so let's go. So of course, we're solving for x and we're gonna get two solutions for x by the time we're finished here So we'll first go ahead and remove the 5 and we're subtracting 5 Okay, and that's how we do it So then we're left with 3x here in the middle And 3x is less than or equal to 30 And we also have 20 minus 5 which gives us 15 So 15 is less than or equal to 3x Continue to solve for x We're just going to divide by a 3 So we'll divide by a 3 And so we're left with our solution Where x is less than or equal to 10 And 5 is less than or equal to x See how quick that was guys, I do like these ones So now we can just go ahead and graph the solution
less than or equal to 5 We can also represent it as x is greater than or equal to 5 And x is less than or equal to 10 So this is the graph that we end up with Alright, good I hope you guys are feeling relaxed so far Let me know in comments if you're feeling relaxed So here we have a word here so it says the value for the area A of the figure is given Right, and to solve a compound inequality for the value of X in the figure So this is the figure here guys, which is, as you all know, a rectangle Alright, so let's get started on this As we know, A is the area for the rectangle So we need to recall that so first, A is your area Right, and we know that the area of a rectangle The formula for the area of a rectangle Is length times width Okay So we need to identify those measurements on the rectangle here And then apply them to the compound inequality that we'll create So, again, A is your area so, taking a look at our rectangle here, we know that the length is your x value and the width is your 4 that is given So, we know that our area is a length of x times a width of 4 Let me just erase these now So, now that we have our area like this, we know we can just uh, multiply here and Right, it has 4x, so the area is 4x So now we're going to take our compound in equal to that they've given us And I'll just quickly rewrite it as is first I'm going to write it again, but instead of putting the a in there I'm going to replace the a with the 4x So we're going to have 20 less than or equal to 4x less than or equal to 32 So now we're going to just go ahead and solve for x Solving for x is just a one step here So we'll just divide through by a 4 Alright So then we're getting our solution Of x is less than or equal to 8 For x is 32 And then over here We have that 5 Is less than or equal to x So then this is our solution guys So x can be 8, 5, x also equal to 8, and x is any other value that falls between 5 and 8 That's it for today guys, I hope you were able to relax with this algebra session where we look at compound inequalities Wherever you are in the world, remember to take care of yourself as best as you can And give yourself some extra, extra love On to my next video with you all, take care